Hello mate and welcome to another exciting video. In this one we're going to look at how to convert your dad's characters, whether they're Genesis 3 or Genesis 8, into iClone characters. So we're going to cover as much detail as we need to. There are plenty of guides on YouTube for this already, but a lot of them leave out some of the important details. So we're going to make sure we cover as much as we need to cover. So let's dive into this. So the first thing you're going to need to find is the Daz Genesis extension for iClone. You can download that. Shouldn't be too difficult for you to find. And then once you download it inside your main folder, you're going to find a series of folders. One for Genesis 3 female, one for Genesis 3 male, one for Genesis 8 female and one for Genesis 8 male. And what you're going to need to do is open up one of these folders. And if you open up the text file, what you can see is it will tell you where to copy the folders. So it'll say the Reillusion folder contained in the specific folder for Genesis 8 Mail needs to go into my library data DAS 3D Genesis 8 Mail Morphs. So open up the text file in the relevant folder. Make sure you copy this Reillusion folder into the correct directory to make sure that you're ready to go. So what I've got loaded into my scene is a custom character that I've made for one of my games. She's in the A pose ready to go. And you'll notice that I haven't put any clothes or hair on her right now. And what we need to do is make sure that she's completely naked so that when we export the character we don't get any extra geometry or materials being added to our FBX file. So the next stage is to open up our Reillusion folder, the one that we downloaded. So in this case, Genesis 8 female. And what we need to do is after we've copied this Reillusion folder into our library, make sure that we do that first. And then all we have to do is drag this Genesis 8 female iClone face key DUF onto our character. What will happen is it will say this preset contains information for frames beyond the length of your current timeline. Would you like to add frames to the timeline in order to import the entire file? Yes. What's going to happen now is very, very quickly, it's actually going to create an animation on the timeline, but we don't have to worry about that right now. Just know that that information is there and it's good to go. So the next thing we need to do is we actually need to export our FBX file by using the file export option. And I'm going to hit save. Now, the next thing we need to do is make sure that we have no hidden. We have figures selected, animations, locks and morphs. We also want to embed our texture, convert static uh, clothing to static geometry. It doesn't really matter because we haven't got any clothing on our character. Allow degraded skinning, allow degraded scaling and make sure you've got FBX 2012 binary selected. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to edit our morph rules. And as you can see here, I've already created one called head dot. Make sure we put head dot. So we're going to add one and then you change the details of this. You double click on it, you type in head dot. And then in this bit, you just select ignore. Now, obviously, I can delete that one because I've already got it added in. And then we hit accept and then we hit accept. Now, what's going to happen is Dash Studio is going to whiz through and it's going to create our FBX file. This may take a while. Uh, depending on your computer and depending on the complexity of the character. Once that's complete, we can jump over into Character Creator 4. And you can see there's a whole number of options that we can choose from. But the one we're going to select, and it's very important that you do this, don't click on Create Character because we haven't got an FBX key. What we need to do instead is go to Transformer and select CC3+. Plus. We're then going to be prompted to load a file, which we can just do by selecting the FBX file that we created and then again Character Creator 3 is going to take a couple of minutes to have a bit of a think about it. The next thing that's going to happen is you're going to see a dialog box which says basic load FBX embedded texture files or advanced automatically detect and load all DAS texture files. This operation may take some time so we're going to hit advanced and then it's going to have a bit of a think again. And then it's going to come up with this dialog. What we want to do is we want to bake the body texture. We're going to change the texture resolution to 4096 because why not? And then we're just going to hit OK. And then after a couple of minutes, you'll be presented with your character in a slightly different pose in a standard standing pose ready for you to go. Now, before you do anything else, I strongly recommend you come up to this item, this icon up here that has like a little head inside a save icon and that is your export as an avatar which will basically save it in this format so that is now saved and ready to go now what you can do is go to your 
scene tab and as you can see at the moment it's labeled cc3 base plus so we can double click on that and we can actually give that a name and then you can save it again as your i avatar now leaping back into das studio what we want to do is we actually want to create a hairstyle to put on this character as well because um we might as well if we've already got a character created for one of our games and we want to be able to do animation or renders using I clone, then we're going to need to get the assets that that character normally uses, for example, clothes and hair, over to I clone as well. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate using a hairstyle. So, what I'm going to do is load the hairstyle into this scene. And now that that's loaded, what I want to do is I want to actually turn off the visibility of the character so that I just have the hairstyle visible. So, making sure that we actually control click on our Samantha G8 character to make sure that nothing is visible then we control click on the hairstyle so that it's only the hair visible we then go to export now all we need to do is hit selected no hidden and figures all of the rest of these can be uh, unselected embed textures convert clothing to geometry degraded skinning degraded scaling and hit accept and that's going to export nice and quickly because we're not exporting any animations with it and then once that's done, we can leap back into Character Creator 4. So now that we're in Character Creator 4 again, what we're going to do is create and we're going to create an accessory. We can't create um, clothing or hair right now because we don't have an FBX key. So we're just going to create and turn this into an accessory and it's going to load. And then after a couple of minutes, it will appear in our scene. So there you go, now you can see it's in our scene. What we can do is zoom right in on the hairstyle and make sure that it's actually fit onto our character correctly. So what we were looking for is any poke through in under the hair, but it looks pretty close to where we want it to be. Now what you're gonna notice is a lot of gray strands here and that's because there's some weird stuff going on. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to, um, I don't know, give it a name that you're gonna be able to identify it again. And then in a modify, we're going to go to our textures. And what you can see at the moment is all of our shaders are currently showing as traditional. So what we want to do is select one of our layers at a time. And where it says shader type traditional, we're going to change it to digital human hair. And do that for every single one of our materials. This might take a moment for each one. So get on and do that and then jump back into the video once that's done. And once that's done, if you have a look around, you can see that none of those horrible um, sort of poly meshes are lurking around now. It all looks like proper hair. It is going to look a little bit thin depending on the maker of the hair um, because, you know, the different people have different number of surfaces and things like that. So the next thing we want to do is we just want to have a quick double check around to make sure if we can spot any places where you can see the hair cap is sticking through in here. There's a little bit right on the top of her head and a little bit on the back of her dome, which means it's probably in more or less the right place, but we can still have a look and see if we can move it to make it better. We don't have to keep these these uh, movements. We can always fix it afterwards if we want to. So we're just going to make sure we set the, the widget to the middle and then we're just going to drag it up ever so slightly just to see if we can get rid of that weird poke through at the top of her head yeah that's gone and then we're going to double check in the back and it seems like that hasn't really gotten any better or worse so we can look and see to make sure that it's actually sitting on her head properly and it looks to be pretty well matched although i think we could probably afford to go back a couple of millimeters so that's what we're going to do just going to drag it ever so gently back a couple of mil double check again that we haven't created more problems here than we have solved seems to be okay and then we can have a look at the back and yeah you can see that that seems to have fixed itself at the back there as well so i would say that that's pretty much in the place we need it to be so what we're going to do now is we can see that at the moment it's attached to cc base hip which is not where we want it to attach to for obvious reasons so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to go to uh, the modify tab at the top and what you can see is create hair, brows and beard. So I've got the item selected. I'm going to go create hair, brows and beard. Reset facial expressions for a better result. Yes, we're going to do that. So I'll reset assuming that she has actually got a different expression. She's still default. But I'm going to select beard, uh, base and all because this is an entire hairstyle. 
However, you can see that if you were adding individual parts, you could actually do that using this method as well. And then we're just gonna hit apply. And then it's gonna have a little bit of a think. And once it's done that, you can simply close down this dialogue. And then if we were to come back down here, you can see that we are now a fully fledged hair item. In fact, if we go to our scene tab, you can see that it has the hair icon there. Now, the reason it was so important to export our character correctly is that if the if the item or the person that you're trying to fit this hair to and use the transfer skin weights tool from is not a proper CC character, you won't have the option to do it, which means you won't be able to apply the hair to it. So now we have a fully fledged character with hair and if we were to put a test animation on our character, so we'll go to content and we'll go to our animation tool up here. And we're just going to go with motion plus, making sure that we're in template and not custom. And we'll go with animated and we'll go with acting and we'll just do a female and we'll do an idle po an idle thing there. Make sure we've actually got the character selected is always a good start. So we'll select our character, apply our animation to it. Give it a few seconds. And now when we hit play, you can see that our character is quite happy to move around with our hairstyle applied to her. Thanks very much for watching that, guys. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, until next time I see you, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.